So you're ready to take your videos to the next level with color grading. Well, you're in the right place. Today, I've got five beginner steps to start color grading like a pro in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I did say five steps, but if you stick around for the whole video, I might throw in a bonus step that will make or break your color grade. Let's get started. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I've got our clips right here, and I'm assuming you have a little bit of a knowledge of DaVinci Resolve already, considering that this is a color grading tutorial. I'm not gonna be going over the edit page or fusion. I'm assuming you already know how to get your footage into the program and ready to start color grading. If you want a beginner tutorial on the edit page or the cut page, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to make a video about it. With step number one, this is probably the most important part of your color grade, because if you mess it up, it'll ruin everything. So when we're on the DaVinci Resolve, edit page. You can do this on any page, but within the edit page, we're going to come over to the settings wheel here and click on that. It's going to pull up this page and give us a couple of options. The one that we're worried about for setting up our color grade is color management. Now, again, I'm not going to go over these other settings because we're only worrying about the color page today. If you look in the background, you can tell that our image is extremely washed out. That's because this was shot in S-Log3 Cine. In order to maximize the dynamic range of an image, cameras will use a log profile to lift the shadows and lower the highlights so that there's more detail in the image to work with in post. If your footage doesn't look like this, then most likely you shot it in a standard profile, which is already Rec. 709, and you don't need to do this first step. So the first thing we need to do is convert this to a color space that we can work in. We need to give an input color space so that our image is converted to Rec. 709. Most monitors and screens are calibrated to a Rec. 709 color space. That's why we use that color space in DaVinci Resolve. Now, in order to put the input color space, we need to know what camera it was shot on. Like I said, this was shot on a Sony a7 IV using S-Log3 Cine. But if you shot with Canon, Airy, or Red, you're gonna use Red Log or C-Log. So if we come up to our color science page here, we can select the DaVinci YRGB and come over to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. Now this is automatic going to do color management with standard definition resolution. Now, if I save this, you'll notice nothing happens. So if I come back into our settings here, I'm gonna turn off automatic color management and it gives us a couple more options. We're gonna hit this drop down menu on our color processing mode and hit custom. This is gonna give us a bunch of different options. We're only worried about the input color space. With the input color space, you're going to select whichever color space you shot in. In my case, I'm using S Gamut 3 Cine S Log 3. So once I select that, that has identified my input color space and my output timeline color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which is the automatic selection. Everything else looks great. You shouldn't have to change anything. If we hit save, you'll notice our image has immediately converted to a Rec. 709 color space. You can see the saturation is there, the contrast is there. We're at a good baseline to start. So in order to get to the color page, you can use the hotkey shift six, or you can just click on the color timeline down here, and this will bring you to the color page. Once we're in the color page, you can see that there's a bunch of different sections and pages that are coexisting within this space. So on the top right, we have our node area. Within the node page, you can add nodes by using the S hotkey, and you can add as many nodes as you'd like, or you can right click and come down to add node and do corrector, parallel mixer, layer mixer, key mixer, all these other things. Corrector is the only one you're really gonna need to worry about. Once you add it, you drag it onto this line and it'll connect with all the other nodes. And then to delete them, you just hit backspace, 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 and we're back to one. Next to it, you'll see your main monitor feed here. This, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if you click on your scroll wheel, you can drag around. That's very helpful when you start masking, not worrying about that today. On the bottom left, you can see our primaries color wheels. Existing down here is also our log color wheels, if you look on this menu bar up here. But you also have the option of the HDR color wheels palette, which is just a new setting that DaVinci Resolve has added into here with HDR color correction. But again, we're only doing SDR today, so primaries are all we're gonna worry about. Within the primaries wheel, you can see lift, gamma, gain, and offset. Lift is going to affect all of the darks in your image. So if I use this master wheel down here to move it back and forth, you will see that the darks in my image 
get brighter and darker as they go around. And to reset it, you can hit this icon and that'll bring you back to the original set. Same thing with gamma. This is going to be the mid tones in your image. Anything like skin tone or eyes, faces, things like that, that's going to be in our gamma. And with our gain, this is going to be the brightest parts of the image. You can see that we start to kind of glow as it moves around. An offset is going to be the image as a whole. In the middle here, you can see our curve section and this can be changed to other different features like windows and tracking and keying. Curves is all we're gonna worry about today. And within our custom curves, we can look at hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, hue versus luminance, luminance versus saturation, the sat versus sat, and sat versus loom. We're not gonna worry about these a ton today, but they do have a lot of features that I will dive into in another series. On the bottom right-hand corner, we can see our scopes page. If you look, the vector scope is what's showing right now, but if you hit this drop-down menu right here, you can see parade, waveform, histogram, and this last page that you don't need to worry about right now. The one we're gonna worry about today is waveform and vector scope. Waveform is going to visualize within a digital wave where the lights and the darks are within your image. So at the bottom here, we can see that that is where the darkest parts of our image will be. And up on top, that's where the brightest parts of our image will exist. The vector scope in the most basic terms is the overall color balance of an image. And you can see that there's these indicators that are showing where everything is. The reason I use the vector scope is in order to identify skin tone. If you hit these little scroll wheels, things right here, the settings, you can pull up show skin tone indicator. When you do that, it will pull up this line that will indicate where your skin tone should be. So if I drag our little qualifier here up onto the skin tone, you can see that it's kind of in the same direction, but it's not nearly as saturated or as bright as it should be. Lastly, on the top left part of our color page, we can see our gallery, our LUTs, and our media pool. So within our media pool, you can see the clip that I pulled in here and our LUTs, you can see all these different options. And these are the ones that DaVinci Resolve pr provides. I believe that the LUTs are only available for the full version of the software. So if you're using the free version, you may not be able to apply the LUTs, but there's a lot of cool effects that you can use here. And like I said, if you watch all the way to the end of this video, I've got a little secret up my sleeve. All right, so for step number two, we need to set up our node tree. So if you remember from earlier, if you hit S, it's going to add a node to your node tree. We're going to add a total of four. In order to keep a little organized, we're going to label these nodes. So if you come to the node and right click and go to node label here, this will pull up a way to label it. For the very first node, we're going to name it exposure and white balance. I like to identify color correction as getting the image as close to accurate and balanced as I can, meaning that the whites are true white and the blacks are true black. After I've done that, I can really focus on the actual grade of the image, which is creating a look that is more stylized and picturesque to what we're accustomed. On our second node, we're going to label it skin since that's where we're going to worry about our skin tone. The third node, we're going to label look. That node is where we're going to worry about our color grading and actually creating a style for the image. And our last node, we don't have to do this one, but we're going to name it window. So now that we have our node tree set up, we're ready to actually start correcting this image. So to start, we're going to come over to our primary wheels and we're going to set the overall exposure and white balance of the image. So within this top section, you can see temperature, tint, contrast, pivot, midtone, and detail. Right now we're gonna worry about contrast. If we increase the contrast, you can see that the image starts to become darker, but the lights are starting to get a little bit brighter. This is identifying that we're using contrast to increase the darks of our image and start to form it into the place it needs to be. Since we've already added a little bit of contrast to our image, we can use pivot to actually move where the center point of that contrast is being affected. So if we turn our pivot to the right, you can see it lowers, and if we turn it to the left, it gets brighter. And that's starting to look a little bit better. So if I kind of massage this a little bit and keep adjusting, then just using contrast, we can actually get this to a pretty dang good spot. And again, I'm paying attention to my waveforms here to make sure nothing is too dark or too bright. You want everything to be in the center and be in a good spot so that everything is balanced. Now that looks pretty good just using the contrast and pivot tool, but this is where lift gamma and gain come into play. I can already tell that my blacks are looking a little interesting and my midtones are starting to lose saturation. So with our lift tool, we can adjust this to add a little bit more of those blacks there. And then our gamma, we can use to adjust them back so we're not crushing things. And then my gain, I'm gonna lift a little bit until I'm almost peaking. You see that now we're in a lot more contrasted of a space. If I hit control D to disable that node, you can tell this is where we started. 
And this is where we ended up just doing contrast, pivot, lift, gamma, and gain. White balance is extremely easy. There's two ways you can do it if you have any white in your image. So his shirt right here seems pretty white. I vaguely remember it being somewhat blue. If it is white, we can come to our white balance picker right here and we can select the white portion of the image. But I don't love how that looks. That made it extremely yellow. So I'm gonna control Z that and come back. And I'm just going to adjust it myself. So if we use these sliders here with the temp and tint, you can see that they change a little bit. If I go way to the right, it gets super warm, way to the left, it gets super blue, okay? So if I come back here, I really wanna bring the warmth back into their skin tone. So I'm gonna kind of pull that until I think it's at a good spot. But then I'm going to adjust my tint because it kind of looks a little green. So I'm gonna bring the magenta back in. Pretty good. That's a that's a good place to start. I think we're pretty much white balanced at this point, just doing those small adjustments. You can see that down the bottom section here, there's this little master wheel for saturation, and we're just going to increase that to the right. You gotta be careful there, because if you go a little too far, then their skin tone starts to look a little too weird. So we're, I'm gonna kind of like sit right there. So now that we've got our exposure and white balance to a good place, let's start working on our skin tone. I like to go to the custom curves tool here. I'm gonna select hue versus is hue and that's going to bring up this page if we select our reds that's typically where most skin tone is identified we can come over to hue rotate and we can move this around to adjust the hue of their skin tone and you can see that i can do a lot of crazy stuff with this thing so with my hue rotate i'm going to bring their skin tone back to where i think it should be i'm not doing too much all of this is minor adjustments that's all color grading is is just being very careful and doing minor adjustments to the image i think that's a good hue to start with we're going to move from our hue versus versus hue to our hue versus saturation. So if we hit this indicator right here, now we're in the saturation tool. So if we do the same thing and we select the reds, you can tell that we can increase and decrease the saturations. We're going to kind of just adjust this to a good spot and just be really careful not to go too far. I think right there is a good spot. Now you can also adjust the hue versus luminance. This is just the brightness of the skin tone in the image. So if we do the same thing, we can move this back and forth until we think it's at a good spot. I actually kind of like to increase the brightness just a little bit. Again, I don't want to wash them out too much, but that's that's starting to look pretty good. You can see we didn't affect a ton, but you can see how much that actually pops and brings out really the saturation and the reds in the image. I also wanna remind you guys that color grading is very, very much a preference type of thing. Really, it's how you perceive the image and how you wanna make it look, that's how it's gonna turn out. Now, as I've been working on this image, I'm really starting to notice that there's a fair amount of noise that's showing up in the frame. You can see this a lot within his beard. Noise reduction is pretty simple. I'm just gonna go over this real quick. So with this node, I'm going to import it at the very first. If you come over to this page, we can come to temporal noise. This is usually how I get rid of it, but if I hit the three over here, and then drag our temporal threshold to the right, you see that starts getting rid of it a little bit. But you gotta be really careful because this can lower the sharpness of your image. I think that's a good spot. Bring my image back to fit. And I can already tell that our image is starting to look a little bit better with that noise reduction added. So now that we've done the initial exposure, white balance, and color correction, we can now actually start color grading our image and creating a look based off of that correction. I like to pull up my primaries. The way I like to start is to add a little bit of blue into the blacks. Now, if you looked at the primary wheels here, you can see that they have these little dots and you could actually move them around. And this is going to really play around with our image. You can see we're kind of like in a rave. But within our lift, I'm gonna take this and drag it towards the blue just a little bit. I get it to a point where the shadows look a little more blue than normal. Now that looks great, but you can see that our skin tone is kind of gone. So I'm gonna come to our gamma and I'm gonna pull it in the opposite direction towards yellow. And I'm hopefully looking at their skin tone, trying to bring it back. It looks like I didn't do anything, but if I hit control D, disable that node and re-enable the node, you can see that our blacks are starting to look a little bit blue. And really all that does is kind of add a little bit more of a filmic type of look to the image. I'm going to add a vignette to this image just to make them pop a little bit more from the background. So in order to do that within our window page, I'm gonna come over to this little icon right here. If I select the circle, you can see that we can adjust this, move it around and do a bunch of fun stuff with it. If I scroll out, I can kind of adjust this to get to a good part Part of our image, I think like right there-ish. I kind of want them to be the center. I may even rotate this just a little bit. Now, in order to make an ellipsis, we come over to our curves 
And if we come back to our custom curves right here, we wanna come up to this top right where you see these three dots. We're gonna pull that down and hit editable splines. Once we've done that, we can hit this top right hand spot and you'll see it'll pull up this little knob. And if we click on that, we can drag up and down this image. And you can see it's kind of affecting the image in a really weird way. That's because our ellipsis that we've created is only being affected in the center. But I'm gonna drag this down a little bit just to get started. And then I'm gonna come back to our Windows page here and I'm going to invert it with this icon. And if I hit that, that inverts our image. You can tell that it's already starting to pop a little bit. They're popping a lot, but you can tell there's a pretty harsh transition between the ellipsis and where it's dark and everything. So we're going to increase the softness right here. So if we come to softness on the page and increase that, you can see that it slowly starts to get softer. I'm gonna adjust it to how I like it. I think about right there there is great. Now, since you've watched to the end of the video, we have done color correction, we've done color grading, but I told you that there was one bonus step if you watched all the way through. It's LUTs and you're using them wrong. Or at least the fair amount of beginners that I see try to use LUTs, they tend to use them the wrong way. So I'm gonna teach you one way that I like to use LUTs. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my window and I'm gonna add a node right after it. But if we come to our LUTs gallery on the top left-hand corner, you guys remember this from earlier, but within these LUTs, you can use them to create a sort of creative look, or at least how I've used them to do that. So I like to come to the film looks. I think there's a lot of cool ones here. Again, this is only available in the full version. Today, we're going to use this Kodak Rec 709 Kodak 2383 D55. And if you right click on it, you can go apply to current node. Now you can see that that absolutely destroys our image. That looks awful. I would never give this to a client. There is a way to adjust the intensity of that LUT. So if we come to this key tab right here and do our key output gain, and if we drag this to the left, you can see that this changes the intensity of our LUT. I can see it's really starting to affect the blacks and the skin tones in the image. With my LUTs, I like them to be super subtle. It shouldn't add that much to the image. That's what color correction and color grading is for. Once we've done all of this color grading, you can see that it actually makes a pretty big difference and works really well for our image. I tend to like it. You don't have to have it. So now our image is looking pretty dang good. This color grade turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So those are the five steps to get you started color grading in DaVinci Resolve. But before you even color grade, you gotta go out and shoot the footage. And if you don't know which camera you should use, well, I'm a big fan of the Sony a7 IV. And if you wanna check out my review, you can go watch this video. And if you enjoyed this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, let me know if you want me to make more in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you never miss out on new young filmmaker content. Good luck filmmaking.